lyrics are killer. Holding in the west, but I heard them say they used to heed the words he said. another episode of Old Men in Chairs and another in our series of Who Did It Better. But today I'm throwing you a little bit of a curveball. I have two songs that talk about Sweet Lorraine. I have the original song that was written in 1928 and the performance is from 1952 by Nat King Cole and his trio. That song was eventually released on an album in 1956. And then about 10 years after that, a San Francisco psychedelic band named Country Joe and the Fish came out with a version, Not So Sweet Lorraine. <laughs> They're two totally different songs, but obviously the Sweet Lorraine song must have served as the inspiration for the Not So Sweet Lorraine. So it's an interesting juxtaposition. I uh, became aware of the Nat King Cole version because, uh, again, I picked up a CD for a dollar at the flea market, and I was just blown away by his talent. Not only is he a great singer, but he also plays the piano uh, while he's singing, which is no mean feat. So I absolutely fell in love with this version of the song. And by the way, like the song that I named as the greatest song in recorded history, Stardust, which I reacted to a few months ago. This one also had lyrics written by Mitchell Parrish. Not for nothing was he called the poet laureate of the songwriters. He just had such a beautiful way with words. I've just found joy. I'm as happy as a baby boy. With another brand new choo-choo chai. When I met my sweet Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraine. One of the things that you notice right away is that Nat has a large amount of makeup. He looks like Michael Jackson. He looks a little bit scary. But apparently... That was required by the company that made this video because they, they wanted him to look a little less black. So they whitened up his face because in the 1950s, black uh, culture and music was not quite as acceptable. And so they, they felt that they had to do that to get it to a wider audience. It's kind of a sad commentary on those times. But if you can just ignore that and listen to the music, it's incredible. A pair of eyes that are brighter than the summer skies. When you see them, you realize why I love my sweet Lorraine. Now when it's raining, I don't miss the sun Because it's in my baby's smile And to think that I'm the lucky one That will lead her down the aisle When it's raining, I don't miss the sun because it's in my baby's smile. And to think I'll be the lucky one to lead her down the aisle. That's from a period long gone, I'm afraid. People feeling that way and expressing their love that way. It's such a beautiful piece of music. Far cry from a lot of the popular music that we have today. Lead her down the aisle each night I pray that no one will steal her heart away. I can't 
wait until that lucky day when I marry sweet Lorraine. piano solo there by Nat. I would almost call that more jazz than blues. An amazing talent who unfortunately died very young from lung cancer. He was a heavy smoker in the days before people really realized there was a connection between those two things. And I think he died at age 45. What a loss. <laughs> Each night I pray that no one will steal her heart away. I can't wait until that lucky day when I marry sweet Lorraine. By the way, Snader Telescriptions um, is one of the earliest examples of what's come to be known as a music video. Television was in its infancy, and this fellow started a company to record and make these videos that later were shown on certain television shows. Another thing about the music there, and we're going to see a big change in music when we go from this to the psychedelic sound of the 60s, is the sound of that guitar. It's a very mellow jazz guitar. He's not bending too many notes there. Everything is clear. To be contrasted with Country Joe's lead guitarist, Barry Melton, who puts on quite a performance. So this is the second consecutive video in which I have been able to access a performance from the Monterey Pop Festival of June of 1967. What a great festival that was. It's most famous probably for the debut of Jimi Hendrix. But so many other great bands were, were in that festival and making their first appearance. I think Janis Joplin was there. And of course, we showed you uh, Otis Redding in the most recent video. And here we have Country Joe and the Fish, a band best known for their Vietnam rag song, One, Two, Three, Four, What Are We Fighting For? <laughs> Which people of a certain age will know. But I had their first album, and it's not a bad song on it, and this song was on it. It's really interesting. Now we're entering a period in the 60s where women were perhaps not as idolized. In some cases, they may have been. But we're also starting to see negative songs about certain type of witchy women. Devil in Disguise, which uh, we, was one of the early songs we reacted to, originally called Christine's Tune by the Flying Burrito Brothers. There are others. But this is one of the most piercing portraits of a woman who... Uh, does not always have your best interest at heart. The song title says, Not So Sweet Martha Lorraine. Martha is not mentioned anywhere in the song. I'm not sure who Martha was or why she got a name check in the title. Maybe they just were trying to avoid any type of copyright claim by using the exact same title. <laughs> Trying to memorize every line. 
couple things to notice right away. That organ is great. And the lead guitar, very, very well done by Barry Melton. It reminds me kind of of Mike Bluefield backing up Bob Dylan at the Newport Festival. He's in there with a blues lick after every line, and he's hitting those licks very, very well. It's interesting, although Joe continued to have a music career for the rest of his life, and he's still alive at 81, Barry retired from music and became an attorney and was mainly involved in criminal defense work being a public defender in California. I guess he thought that was a better lifestyle than being a traveling musician. lyrics are killer. I mean, sweet lady of death wants me to die so she can sit by my bedside and cry and explain to all my friends how I went insane and finally blew out my brains. <laughs> sweet lady of death. A long cry from the sweet Lorraine uh, in the first song. This is a not very sweet woman. Blow out my brain, sweet Lorraine. instrumental break there and I have to comment on the bridge the shame that this Lorraine was raised in the city and never learned nothing about country ways it's actually a Shakespeare reference there if you don't know it look it up but it's a double because it's also country Joe and the fish so she doesn't know anything about his country ways and a very fine musical performance uh, this band was tight this band knew what they were doing She's got the Mac, but you know, when you look into her eyes, all she's had, she's had to memorize, and the only way you'll ever get a high is to let her do her thing and then watch you die.
some nice flow changes there <laughs> what we would call those today where the band was really showing off their stuff that organ solo was amazing too but look how the world changed in less than 15 years from uh, Nat King Cole's pristine love song to <laughs> how rock and roll with Country Joe growling at you about not so sweet Lorraine. And obviously, it's not fair to ask who did this song better because it's actually two different songs. But I just thought it would be fun to take a look at them and maybe introduce uh, both of those songs to a wider audience because they're both in their way beautifully done. Thank you. 